my servant, whom I have chosen, the one I love, in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not quarrel or cry out. No one will hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out, till he has brought justice through to victory. In his name, the nations will put their hope. Matthew 12, 18 through 21. Hey everyone, this is Amanda from DevotionInAction.com, and today I'm going to use this uh, masking fluid. Now, I will tell you that I don't use this very often, so it's pretty old, and when I get it open, it's a little gunky. <laughs> so what I have done is I have prepped my page with gesso, and I have taken a pencil and very lightly done block lettering, like kind of bubble block lettering of Jesus across the white part of this page. Now masking fluid, what it does is you put it down and it dries into kind of a uh, gummy kind of surface um, that you can pick up after you have painted over the top of it and it will leave the white space on the page. Uh, just as a little uh, side note, uh, sorry, this video is a lot longer than our typical day's videos because I got all artsy fartsy on this day. I don't know what what um, what inspired me, but all of a sudden I could just see it in my page and I wanted to uh, see it in my head and I wanted to see um, several different techniques on this page. So you're going to get several techniques today. We're going to use some salt. We're going to use this masking fluid. There's going to be a ton of paint everywhere. There's going to be some metallic sprinkles. I mean, we're just going all out on this page about the power of the name of Jesus. And right now I'm just laying laying down kind of a thick coat of this masking fluid. Now, something that did happen is because this is older, kind of gunky masking fluid, normally, I mean, when I've used it before, when I take it up the page, it leaves the white page behind. And today, it uh, yellowed the page on those letters. So you'll get to see how I fix that in a little bit. But normally, masking fluid will leave a white space. It just kind of protects that white space so that when you pull up, after you've got the paint all dry and everything, when you pull up that masking fluid, it leaves it leaves the, the space as it was. Uh, that is coarse, kosher salt that we're going to use uh, to create kind of a different effect with the watercolors that we're going to use today. I've just got some clear water here and I'm going to, I want to do a wet on wet technique. So I'm just putting down just clear water on the page. Now, I will, will say this. If you're going to do this technique with all of this wetness, we're going to have a lot of liquid on this page. I would gesso the page first. If you don't, that liquid is going to soak in and start to disintegrate the illustrating Bible pages. Um, it, it's just because these pages, they soak up the water so much more than a traditional journey Bible journaling Bible does. Although, because I knew I was going to be putting a lot of paint and a lot of moisture on the page, even if I was using a traditional journaling Bible, I would probably gesso the page to begin with. Um, if you don't have gesso, but you do have like clear uh, matte gel medium, which is basically clear acrylic paint, um, then you could, you could prep it with that too, I believe. Um, it puts a barrier on the page kind of like gesso does. Um, and now I'm, I wanted this page to be kind of um, a purpley reds and blues and then like a really strong purple, especially over the word Jesus. I, I've said before and I just keep coming back to, I love uh, to use when, when I'm painting about the name of God or Jesus and I love to use purples. I color them in with colored pencils. I always go to purple when it's the name of, name of God or Jesus. It just feels very royal to me and uh, majestic. And so I, I, I love purple for that. So you're going to see a lot of purple going down on Jesus. And you can see how the paint kind of rolls off of that. Uh, what's that called? <laughs> I just said it. Oh, my word. My brain today, people. Anybody else having a brain fog today? Um, uh, masking fluid <laughs> that masking fluid that is dry there um, so you just put down the masking fluid wherever you want the page to stay white and then you let it dry or hit it with a heat tool and dry it and then you paint over the top of it and now that I've got quite a bit of paint on that page I'm gonna put down um, just sprinkle that kosher salt all 
the way around. And you'll see, uh, you can't see it super well on camera, but it, if you do this technique, you'll see that that salt kind of makes something happen with the watercolor paints. It, it, it does something there. And so uh, I hit that with a heat tool and dried it really well. The salt's still on there. I'm just drying that paint on there to see if I like the colors or if I want to add something more. And while I'm doing that, uh, let's just talk a little bit about this scripture. It talks about Jesus and how the nations will put their hope in his name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Uh, it, when, we, when we pray, Jesus himself instructed us that we're to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. And when, when we, when we want to get things done... Uh, I've noticed in life, and I'm sure you have too, that when you get the right person on the job, things just get done. When, when, you, when you have somebody who doesn't, who's not a, a go-getter, who doesn't get things done, a project can sit unfinished for decades, for, for forever. It can feel like it takes forever to get anything to move on that project. But if you get the right go-getter in there, if you get the right person for the job, in the job, then things just get done. And I, that's how I kind of pictured this, that, that when you get Jesus on the job, things get done. There's power in his name. There is power in the name of Jesus. You'll notice that I, my heat gun is, is industrial strength, and it really it puts a lot of air through there. And I noticed that it was pushing the paint right over the edge through those spiral the through the spiral binding but it didn't it didn't end up hurting anything uh, but I just wanted to kind of pick that up with some paper towel so you might be careful at the angle that you point your heat tool if you've got so much paint and water on the page and this was uh, a little lighter than I really kind of wanted it I think I w wanted to go back in and add some more depth to this color and really kind of darken it up um, this is not, I don't know how well this will show on camera or in pictures, but in, in person, this page turned out really well. I'm super happy with the way that it came out. And part of that was keeping on putting a lot of color on this page, just plopping that watercolor on there, just keeping on, keeping on, keeping on, keeping on, adding some color to it until it was what I wanted it to be. And so I'm even adding some more paint in um, to my palette to be able to add more color there <clears throat> and get it exactly the way that I want it to be. So here we are, I gotta add some water to that and mix up uh, that more purple. I, I need more purple, more purple stat, right? <laughs> and get that get that purple in there and it's kind of nice because when you have to mix mid um mid water coloring sometimes you don't always get the exact same color and that's what's happened here i've got a different color purple and that's perfectly fine with me i kind of like uh, the depth that it creates when we have different tones of the same color so now i have uh, some more of this purple and you can kind of see it's not looking great yet but do not fear. Um, you got to trust the process when it comes to this masking fluid and just put that, keep putting that paint down and keep drying the layers, keep putting the paint down. And then I was like, ooh, this needs some sparkles. It needs some, some gold sparkles on here. So I'm going to activate this uh, Kurataki metallic set. I think it's called Starry Colors. And on a, on a big fluffy brush. And then if you hold your finger there and kind of tap the paintbrush, it, it splatters the page with the paint uh, much better than if you just shake the paintbrush at the page. Now, caution note, it will end up everywhere. My camera um, lens cap was sitting on the table uh, while it was off of the camera and I have paint, I had paint splotches all over that that I had to like just wipe off and it just kind of goes everywhere. Uh, at the conference I heard somebody say that they uh, had paint all over their computer because <laughs> they were watching it on their computer while they were painting and so paint went everywhere when they were when they were making these little um, splatter marks. So now I'm taking some metallic purple that's from the gem color set by Kurataki. Um, if you have like the full gigantic set of Kurataki Gonzai Tambay 
uh, watercolors. They might come with some of these metallics. I don't know. I don't have the whole big full set. I just have some of the metal the little metallic sets by Kurataki. And then I use other watercolors as my main colors. Although I wouldn't mind trying them. Maybe someday I'll get those and I can make a video of uh, uh, whether or not I like them or, or you know, how, how they work for me. I tend not to be too picky when it comes to watercolors, although I have come across some really cheap like cake sets that feel very chalky to me and I don't care for that very much. I like to work with either the tubes or um, I have a Cotman, I forget what it's called, uh, a travel set, a uh, Winsor Newton Cotman uh, watercolor travel set that I really like, uh, but I've used almost all of the colors out of that. And um, I have a tiny set of Daniel Smith, which are more expensive watercolors for those of you who don't know about it that my husband got me and I use them very sparingly because they're expensive and I'm cheap <laughs> but they are they're like professional watercolors so like if I want to make something that is a gift that I want to last on real watercolor paper and um, that that's when I would probably use those for my Bible art journaling if I was making um, if I was making a gift Bible maybe I would you know a heritage Bible or something, but for my everyday journaling in Bibles where I'm doing a ton of journaling and uh, I want to just keep working in them all the time, I don't mind using less expensive watercolors that aren't maybe going to last for hundreds of years and aren't um, completely archival quality watercolors. So what you want to do before you can take off that masking fluid is to make sure that the paint that you've put over it is very 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 dry and with so many layers of watercolor and so much paint that I put on here um, I really wanted to make sure that was dry then once you know that you have it dry you're going to l gently rub your page what this is going to do is rub that salt like the extra salt off of there so you don't have it poking into your pages so I am just kind of rubbing off that salt and it will it just it will just like um it'll just roll off the page. You just kind of have to be uh, gentle and rub that salt off of there and it will leave the look. It, it, it's very interesting. It leaves these little, I don't know, pock marks, polka dots, little salt marks. And the way that the watercolor reacts to it is a little different too. So that's, and then I just tilted up my Bible and I'm just brushing that salt right off of there. Just gently brushing it off. And it's okay with me if there's a few pieces still left on there. It kind of sparkles. It's it's fine. <laughs> uh, it doesn't bother me all that much. Now I'm just taking my fingernail and getting that masking fluid started. And then it, once you get it started coming off, if you just hold, kind of hold it under your finger like a ball and rub it, it will pick up the other really easily. So it's almost, I'm trying to think of something that works this way. Um, oh, when you're like pulling the lint off of your uh, lint trap for your dryer, if you get a little bit of lint, it helps pick up the rest of the lint too. That's just kind of working the same way. It makes it into a gummy kind of, uh, a gummy kind of surface. But you can see how it did not, it, it yellowed my letters. And I think that's because I have older masking fluid. This is, it's gotten old and gunky and I don't use it very often. And so I think that's why it yellowed these. It, it doesn't typically yellow. So at least it hasn't before it's left it white. Um, so you might want to be careful with that as far as like, if you want pure white, but I'm going to, it's not going to matter because I'm going to paint over this uh, over these letters since it yellowed it. If it had left it white, I think I would have left it white and just outlined around it, but happy accident, it yelled it, yellowed it. So we're going to, to paint over these after we get it, get all of this masking uh, fluid off of here. And you can see it's picking it up and leaving those nice kind of sharp lines, which is great. There are masking fluid pens where you can uh, write in pen. Mine happens to be almost like a fingernail polish brush that that it uses on there it's a little flatter than that which is nice for making kind of straight edges and corners um, it, and my masking fluid is from Hobby Lobby um, so if you're looking for it I know it's available there and certainly on Amazon Michaels would have masking fluid uh, you just uh, I 
my like I said, mine did not yellow before, and now it is as it gets older. So you might want to just be careful about how old the masking fluid is, or if you're worried about that, you could uh, test it on a surface first and see if it does it. Um, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm not super worried about it because I did, I was pulling as I was working this masking fluid off of the page. I was thinking, how am I going to fix this? It is very yellow, and I don't like that up next to the the purple, and <laughs> it didn't turn out like I wanted. And so um, my little brain is just uh, smoking out my ears, thinking fast and furious about what I'm going to do to fix the problem. And uh, lo and behold, we came up with a solution here. <laughs> Um, and I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that gold paint that I sprinkled on and I'm going to make these letters gold. Now one nice thing about having done the masking fluid beforehand is that now I have um, a nice flat gessoed surface that the letters are already outlined for me on to paint in which turned out to be really nice to be able to paint with the gold on those on those yellow letters and we're going to we're going to shine them up and make them make them shiny and I really like how this turns out. So I was thinking I would start with a lighter gold. Um, you'll see that this is going to end up with layers because I end up wanting it shinier and shinier. <laughs> and uh, it not exactly what what I had in mind, but but we're going to we're going to paint over that with with the gold and get those filled in and uh, see see how we feel about it. There we go. I wanted you to be able to see which gold I was taking there. At this point I'm still working with the one on the far left and putting that on there. If I was going to do it again though I would start with the brighter gold and just just start immediately with that one. Um, when I got done with this I didn't care very much for how light it was. I wanted it to make more of an impact, more of a statement on the page. And so uh, I just kept working at it until I got what I wanted. And that's the nice thing about watercolors. If you if you don't like the way it looks, add more stuff or grab your grab your water and take some away. Um, you can keep working at it until you get it the way that you want. Although I will say this, the main thing about Bible art journaling and uh, responding to scripture through art is not the art itself. It's not how it turns out. It's what God does in you while you're responding to his word and uh, what God, what you apply from what God speaks to you through his word. Now here I was thinking, uh, well, it's not exactly what I want, but maybe if I put the brighter gold down as kind of like a shadowing effect. So um, going along the bottom and the edge of the letters, maybe I can um, create the effect that I want. And so I'm giving that a try. <laughs> see, we just keep, we keep trying things and see if it's what, if it's what we want. It was a little too blotchy for me. It felt a little too um, preschool watercolor. I don't know. It just felt uh, a little too blotchy. It wasn't going down um, thick enough. Uh, for what I had in my head, I guess, as far as creating those, um, the, the shadowing there where it would be dark at the bottom and along the side. And so I'm going to dry it and see how it comes out. And, and then I'm like, well, we need more. <laughs> we just need more, more sparkle, more gold, please. More, 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 more. <laughs> So, so after I get this dried, you're going to see me lay down another coat of gold on this Jesus. And that's okay. We just keep working at it. Although what I was saying is it, it, at some point you can just stop and say, you know what? I've got the point of the scripture. It's okay the way it is. It doesn't have to be perfect. But when I laid down that right there, that first swipe of the thickest layer of that third in from the left uh, gold paint, I was like, yes, that is what I was looking for. <laughs> that, that, that first swipe convinced me. I'm like, okay, yep, that's what I want. It was really shiny, very opaque, and um, it made it so much more royal. It felt rich and 
and so like it really stood out on the page next to the purple and I, I really really liked that so you can you can skip my uh, wobbling around and trying to figure out what I'm going to do and go straight to that step if you like it <laughs> or if, you, if you'd like to try that um, you could also if you really wanted the bright white letters you could use white acrylic paint uh, to do this to make the Jesus stand out or you could um, use a different color like if you wanted them in black you could you could do like black letters and outline with a white pen and that would be cool you could I could have come in with a really dark um, more saturated purple and done them done the letters of Jesus in that dark saturated purple and then outlined them in white which would have been very cool you, so there are a lot of options for fixing this problem, especially if you don't have gold metallic paint just sitting around like I did. Um, I, I have quite a few art supplies because for a few years now, my husband asked for an art supply list before birthdays and Christmas. So um, I'm very blessed. He'll, he'll take my list either online or to the art store and uh, get help finding all of the things. And <laughs> even though he is not not an artist himself and doesn't really he, he didn't really get it um, but he, he sees that I love it and so he'll he'll get those things for me for birthdays and Christmas which is very nice so I just I want to dry that really 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 well and then I'm just gonna take my uh, my black pen here you can use any black pen for this because we're doing it after we've already done the the watercolor but I just had that Faber-Castell pit artist pen sitting there and I, I'm gonna outline and this is I wanted a rough outline, so I'm not being super careful to make it super straight. This is a kind of a messy page. There's a lot of watercolor going on. There's a lot of textures going on. And that salt, there's still a few little pieces of that salt on the page. So I knew I wouldn't be able to make very, very straight, very, very perfect uh, outlining lines on this. So I'm going to just uh, pull in uh, the outline of these in the black and then go all the way around the letters just to make that stand out and be finished it didn't look I loved the shiny of the gold but it didn't look finished and that I wanted it to look finished <laughs> so here I am just kind of pulling this in like I said it's a loose outline it can go into the gold it can go out into the purple a little bit and that is perfectly okay in fact I wanted it to look so intentional that one of the things that I learned in, this is actually something I learned in music. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, my college degree is in music education and I teach part-time. I teach my kids, I homeschool my children. I have um, an eighth grader and a junior in high school and they have been homeschooled all their lives and I homeschool them and then I teach uh, one to two days a week at a local private school. Uh, I teach music there and uh, one of the things I learned in improvisation in music school is that if you do something and it doesn't sound quite right or it do, then do it again because the more repetition that happens uh, the more that we assume that it's intentional and it sounds right to our ear and so that kind of applies in the art world as well um, if it doesn't look intentional the first way do it again and the two lines will make your eye think this is exactly how they wanted it to be. So uh, that's one little tip for you. Repetition makes it appear intentional, which is really nice. <laughs> so, and I did, I really, really liked how that came out when I did two outlines around the name of Jesus. And here I'm just writing above it in black. I'm writing power in the name of, and then we've got the big Jesus. And here I'm going to just um, add in the hashtag DIA Hope Challenge, just like I am on all of these journaling things, and the date. And I, I can't tell you. I mean, I had so much fun trying out these new techniques, and I really like how this page came out. It's probably not everybody's cup of tea, but it. I just really had a lot of fun. <laughs> it's big. It's uh, kind of splashy. A lot of color. A lot of sparkle, and um, just a lot of fun. So I hope you have fun with today's 
devotional and any art that you create in response to this scripture in Matthew. And more than that, I hope you realize that there's power in the name of Jesus when we call on his name and he comes on our behalf into our circumstances in this world. Have a great day. I can't wait to hear from you on social media.